I have over the years managed to accumulate quite an impressive collection of technological disasters. There was the time when I downloaded the wrong firmware for my Kenwood mixer and it thought it was a set of DJ decks and now every time I make a cake I've got to listen to pump up the jam. And then there was when I dropped my, my phone into a puddle and a friend of mine said, well, don't turn it on, put it in a bag of rice. Well, I didn't have a bag of rice and apparently this doesn't work if you use boil in the bag risotto. And then just today, the SD card that I'm recording on right now is actually the SD card from my other camera because I happen to have used the SD card from this camera to mod my DSi XL by mistake. So when I tell you I've successfully modded a DSi XL, Firstly, it's kind of a lie, but you should take that as quite an encouraging sign because if somebody with my track record can muddle through it without setting anything on fire or accidentally ordering cat food from Amazon, again, then you're going to be absolutely fine, I promise you. And this is really worth doing because modding your DSi or DSi XL gives you access to DS games, GBS games, DSiWare games from your SD card which is incredibly convenient. We're going to install something called Twilight Menu, which doesn't come with a sparkly vampire, I'm afraid. Or we're going to do it in a way that doesn't require a degree in computer science or the ability to read hexadecimal code while standing on one leg and reciting the periodic table backwards. There's a few steps involved. None of them are difficult. But it is a little bit frustrating because there's a lot of taking a card out and putting a card back in and turning things on and turning things off and turning them on again. It's the kind of thing that really annoys me about all of these things where you've got, oh, there's an exploit. And then all of a sudden you spend half an hour pressing lots of buttons just to find out that it doesn't work. Um, unfortunately, in this instance, it's just unavoidable. And all you've got to do is follow the instructions step by step. You don't need to download anything until you reach that point in the process. Um, and that kind of keeps everything a little bit neater on your desktop. And by the end of it, you'll have a fully modded console, which you can load anything onto. Uh, I managed to do this whilst suffering from quite a severe gastric bug over the last week, uh, whilst being distracted by the cat that mysteriously appeared after the Amazon incident. We don't own a cat and I may have been hallucinating. I don't know. We're also going to make sure that everything that we do is safe. We're going to make sure that we have got a backup of your system's internal memory. Now, I've never actually heard of anybody needing this, but we're going to do it anyway because it is better to be safe than sorry. You know, we keep a fire extinguisher in the kitchen. We have never had a fire in the kitchen. We've never had a fire and hopefully touch wood, we never will. Um, but you'd feel pretty stupid if the chip pan caught fire and all of a sudden all you had was a packet of digestive biscuits and a window box growing mixed herbs. So before we get started, there are a few things that you are going to need. And I've got links to these. Now, I was going to put links in the description. What I think I'm going to do is put them on a Patreon post. But the Patreon post is going to be open to everybody. So go over to that post and you'll have all the links in there. Um, but you won't need to frantically scribble notes down or pause the video 17 times. Um, so the first thing you're going to need to do is download 7, 7-zip and install it if you're on Windows or the Unarchiver if you're on Mac. Uh, this will help you extract archived files. Then you're also going to need Rufus for formatting your SD card. Uh, you'll need the boot.nds file and then you'll need the memory pit exploit files, and there's two versions of these, which sounds confusing, but we'll work out which one you need in a minute. You're going to need Twilight Menu itself, obviously, and then you'll need the uh, unlaunch installer, and you'll also need your games, and I'm not going to tell you where to get those games from, because Google is your friend here, but you're also going to want to download uh, the first of these files, the boot.nds, which you can find linked in the thing. And whilst you're getting boot NDS and ZZIP installed, all and the other uninstaller installed, uh, we're going to have a government informational film for you. OK, the first thing we need to do is check whether or not your console has already been modded. So to start off with, press and hold both A and B at the same time whilst turning on your DSi. If the console just starts normally, then you have an unmodded console and we're ready to go with the next step. If it doesn't and you see a menu which says unlaunch on it somewhere on the screen, you can jump straight to the bit which is dumping the NAND, which will be linked in the timestamps. 
Okay, so if we're ready to go, grab your SD card, and we need to format that properly, and we're going to be doing that with Rufus on PC. Now, if you're on a Mac, Disk Utility is usually smart enough to handle this correctly for cards that are 32 gigabytes and under. If you want to use cards that are over 32 gig, you can still use Disk Utility, but your menus may lag a little bit or take a little bit longer to load. If you can borrow a Windows PC for five minutes, that might be a better option. But to all of you who are on Windows, fire up Rufus, select your SD card, and please, I am begging you, make absolutely sure it's the right one, because this will wipe everything on it. You're also going to want to make sure you change your boot selection to non-bootable. You're going to want to set it to FAT32 with a 32 kilobyte cluster size and MBR partition scheme. Don't ask me what MBR stands for, I've got the faintest idea. Just make sure it says MBR. You should also uncheck Create Extended Labels and Icon Files. And once done, click the Format button. Wait for it to finish, which takes a minute, maybe two. Perfect time to check your phone and discover that you've accidentally ordered more cat food. And then copy the boot.nds file onto the root of your SD card. That's it. Don't put it in a folder. Don't rename it, just stick it straight into your SD card like you're dropping files onto your desktop. Now you pop that SD card into your DSi and you turn it on. You're going to want to open up the camera app at this point, and if you haven't used this before, you'll need to complete the tutorial, which is just basically a quick walkthrough showing you how to take photos and apply silly effects. Once that's done, open the, well, tap the icon that says album, and now this is important. Take note of whether or not you have a Facebook icon at the top of the screen or not. This is on some models and not on others, and we need to know this because there are two different versions of the next file that we need to download. And downloading the wrong one means that nothing will work. So once you know that, turn off your console, take the card back out, stick it in your computer, and you're going to want to navigate into the private folder on your SD card. You want to go to DS, Apps, 484E494A on your SD card, and you'll see a file called pit.bin. Rename that to tip.bin. We're not going to delete it, we're just temporarily changing its name so that we can put our exploit in its place. Now download the correct memory pit file, either the Facebook one or the non-Facebook one, depending on what you saw earlier, and then place that pit.bin file into the folder where the tip.bin file now exists. Easy, right? One more thing whilst we're here, if there's a folder called DCIM in the root of your SD card, back that up somewhere safe, because we'll restore it later, but we need to get it out of the way for now. It's got your photos on it, so you're not going to want to lose those. Okay, once you've done that, put the card back in the console, turn on, launch the camera app again, and then select the SD card icon on the top right hand side of the screen. Open the album using the large button on the right again, and the screen should flash magenta. This is good. It's supposed to do that. That is the exploit working. And whatever you do, do not take photos whilst this exploit is active. It will mess up everything that you've just done. I don't know exactly what. I've got some idea that it's going to open a rift in the space-time continuum or something equally dramatic, but I followed the instructions this time, so do that and it won't happen. If the top screen turns green instead of magenta, that means that boot.nds is not on the root of your SD card. So go back, check that you've put it in the right place, not in a folder, just straight on the card. And once you get that magenta flash, dump tool is going to open. Now, unless you already have unlaunch, if you're joining us back from the beginning of the video, hello. Okay. If you've had that magenta flash, you can just hold tight for a second, um, and if you're rejoining, this is what you should do. With the SD card in the console, open Unlaunch by holding down A and B whilst turning the console on, and then find boot.nds from the list, and then press the A button to launch Dump Tool. Okay, so that means everybody now should be back in the same place. This is where we back up our NAND, which, as I mentioned earlier, this is that insurance policy we're taking out just to make sure that nothing goes horribly wrong. And when this opens, you'll see a blank screen. 
you just press A and it will start dumping the files. It takes about seven minutes. So go make yourself a cup of tea, scroll through social media, contemplate your life choices, buy some more cat food, whatever works for you. Just let it do its thing. When the backup's complete, press the start button to exit and then power off the console completely. Now this process needs a lot of taking the SD card in and out. So take the SD card out and put it back in your computer. And you'll see a new folder in there that starts DT and it'll have a date and timestamp afterwards. That is your NAND backup. That is your insurance policy. So copy the entire folder, put it somewhere safe, an external hard drive, cloud storage, email it to yourself, whatever you want to do, just keep it somewhere that you can find it again if you need to. And you probably won't need it, but it's there if something goes horribly wrong. And once you've done that, you can delete it from your SD card to free up space. It is quite large and we do need the room. And you can also delete boot.nds from the SD card because we've finished with it now. Job done. OK, and believe it or not, that was the most difficult part of the whole process. From here on out, it's pretty smooth sailing. Well, it's smoother sailing. It's less marmalade with chunks in and more smooth marmalade. There is still a little bit of... OK, I'll get on with it. So now I want you to download the Twilight Menu++ from the link and extract Twilight Menu hyphen DSI dot Z seven Z using seven zip. You'll get a bunch of folders and files. Don't panic. Just copy the underscore NDS folder, the ROMs folder, and the boot dot NDS file to the root of your SD card. That's it. Three things. You can do this. I believe in you. Now we need to install what's called unlaunch. So we download unlaunch as well from the link in the description. Um, it's called unlaunch-installer.dsi and place it anywhere on your SD card, doesn't matter where. I've put mine in the root because I'm lazy and I couldn't be bothered creating a folder. But put the card, when you've done all that, when you've copied all of those files, back in your console and turn it on. And we're going to go through that same process with the camera app again. So you press the camera app icon, you go to the SD card, you hit album and your screen will go magenta again. We've been here before. We're old friends with the magenta screen right now. Now, the first time you do this, you're going to want to choose which language that you want to use. And you can choose that by going left and right on the D-pad. And when you've selected the language that you want, all you do is press the A button to proceed. You'll then have to choose which region you want. I chose USA. And then you hit the A button again and it'll load Twilight Menu, which is quite exciting, actually. First time you see this, you'll think, oh, I've done something technical. I'm basically a hacker now. You should feel quite pleased with yourself, though, because you've done an awful lot at this point. We're nearly at the end stage. And you should be able to see the unlaunch installer somewhere as an icon on this Twilight Menu. It's the same place that you put it in there. So tap on that, and once it opens, press the A button when the warning appears, and it'll tell you something about how this is going to install, unlaunch, and modify your system. But that is exactly what we want. That's why we're here. So select Install Unlaunch, press A, and now we just wait while it does its thing. It takes 30 seconds. It's not long at all. And press A once the installation is done, and then hold down the power button to turn the system off completely. OK, we're actually very, very nearly done here. There's just a bit of configuring to do, a little bit of tidying up. So once more, turn on the console whilst holding A and B. We did this in the beginning, remember, to check whether or not it was modded. Well, now it definitely is modded, so you should launch into unlaunch. And it's got this rather retro looking menu, which is, I suppose is quite charming, really. And you navigate to options to so use the D-pad to do that. And then where it says no button option, you press A again. And from the list that comes up, you choose Twilight Menu and then press A once more. Finally, you select Save and Exit to save your settings. And then you turn off your DSi once more. And what we've done there, it means that when you turn your console on, it will automatically load Twilight Menu instead of the normal DSi launcher. Very convenient. And now we'll be playing games uh, directly from there, directly from the SD card. Now we're nearly there. There's one last bit of housekeeping. So take your card out again, put it back in your computer, navigate to that same folder we did before, private DS app 484E494A, then delete the pit.bin file that's there. That's the exploit that we installed earlier. We don't need it anymore. And rename tip.bin back to p 
pit.bin. And remember, we renamed that at the beginning. Well, now we're putting it back to how it was. Restoration, if you like. And you can now restore that DCIM folder if that was on the root of your SD card as well and you backed it up earlier. Just copy it back where it was and delete the unlaunch installer DSI file. We don't need that anymore either. Now put your DSi games in the ROMs DS folder. Uh, put your GBA games, if you've got any, in the ROMs GBA folder. And any DSiWare games in the ROMs DSi folder. I say your games, the games that you definitely own legitimate copies of and have legally backed up yourself, obviously, because my lawyer's making frantic hand gestures at me from across the room. Once you've done that, put the card back in the console, power the console on, Twilight menu should load automatically, and when this menu loads, you navigate to the ROMs folder and you'll see DS, GBA, and DSi folders with all of your games in them. All you've got to do from this point is select one, press A, and it will launch. Simple as that. You're now running games from your SD card and you've successfully modded your Nintendo DSi. Congratulations. You are now marginally more technical and marginally more competent than you were half an hour ago which is more than I can say about most of my attempts at technology. And that's it, really. It's not a complicated process, certainly not as complicated as it seems when you read a list of what you've got to do out. I mean, it's a few steps. There's a bit of shuffling files around, of course, but there's nothing too taxing. And if I can do it whilst pretty ill and distracted by a cat that may or may not be real, then you can absolutely do it. And if you run into any problems, do leave a comment below and I'll do my best to see if I can help. Though I should warn you, my technical support may consist of saying, have you tried turning it off and on again? Followed by, have you checked it's definitely plugged in? But if this helped you out, please do give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments how you got on, uh, whether it's worked out for you first time or whether you had to watch this video 17 times like I had to with the tutorials that I followed originally. And thanks for watching. And remember, we're all idiots, really. Some of us are just better at hiding it from others. Happy gaming.